Hi everybody and welcome to Duke Magian Wilderness Park in the city of Glendale, California. My name's Jeff Weinstein and we're back for another virtual campfire program. Today our theme is Nature Mythbusters. We're going to talk all about those myths and legends that you've probably heard about growing up. Are they really true or are they just a big fake? So why don't you join us for our campfire program. We're going to have a song, a skit, a Native American legend, and then we'll finish with our campfire. So get ready to go because Nature Mythbusters is coming at you. So I hope everybody's doing okay during this time. So, you know, we can't be together. It's hard to see family and friends. And when everyone's wearing a mask, you can't really tell if people are happy or not. People say, oh, you can tell by a person's eyes. But when I'm wearing a mask and a hat and my glasses, it's, it's kind of hard to see my eyes and if I'm happy or not. But there's a song that I think you know. It's called, If You're Happy and You Know It. So why don't you stand up and join me with that and we'll get a little spirit going and a little happiness. Okay, here we go. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray. And you can add your own verses too. You can hop around, you could scratch your head, you can whistle a happy tune, whatever you like. But maybe we could start that as a trend. When you see somebody, let them know you're happy. You could clap, you could stomp your feet, you could say hooray. All right, well, let's get back to the program. So I've been looking online at a lot of the popular myths and I've seen lists the 10 most popular myths, the 15 most popular myths, and a lot of them are the same. I've even asked some of my friends, what are your family myths that you've heard and they've submitted to me? So I'm just gonna share with you some of the plant and animal myths that seem to be the most popular. One of them is, is a dog's mouth cleaner than a human's? A lot of people wanna know that. But actually scientists are saying it's like comparing an apple and an orange. They're both fruits, but they have several differences. A lot of the bacteria inside a dog's mouth is different than the bacteria in a human's mouth. And a lot of diseases we don't pass back and forth. So if you know someone that's got a cold or the flu, you kiss them, you might catch that. You're not gonna catch that from your dog. So when people say, oh, don't let that dog lick your lips or kiss you, you're not gonna get sick from a dog, but they might have doggy breath. Who knows what they were eating before they kissed you, okay? They think the myth started because animals, especially dogs, are always licking themselves, especially when they have a wound. So that's kind of how that myth started. So to say, is a dog's mouth cleaner? I don't think we can really say that one's true or false. It's kind of in the middle. So you might need to do a little further research. I got a lot of my information from the internet. And as you know, you can't always trust the internet. I looked at several sites trying to get the most accurate information, but who knows? I found a nice little book. It's called the National Geographic Kids Myths Busted. And this has a number of the most popular myths and it might be a fun read for you. So again, National Geographic Kids Myths. A plant myth that I want to talk about is if you swallow a watermelon seed. That might not be as a big a problem nowadays because we have a lot of seedless watermelons. But when I was a kid, you had the watermelons with all those black seeds in them. And they'd say, if you swallow those seeds, you're going to get a watermelon growing in your stomach. But actually, that's not true. 
you can't break down the shell or the husk on that seed. It's just gonna go right through you. In a couple of days, when you go to the bathroom, those seeds are gonna come out. So that myth is not true. You won't be growing a watermelon inside of you. A similar one is if you swallow a piece of gum. Some people say that gum is gonna stay inside of you for up to seven years, but that's not true either. I don't know how that one started. I don't know if people thought the gum is sticky, it's gonna stick inside your stomach or your esophagus, but that gum also is not gonna get dissolved by your stomach acids. It too in a couple days will come right through you. But you shouldn't make a habit of swallowing gum because who knows what that might do to you, okay? Another popular myth is if you touch a frog's warts, you're gonna end up with warts on your hands. That too is only a myth, that's not true. The human warts are caused by a virus that you have in, inside of you. The warts on a frog, not gonna affect you. But some frogs, some toads do secrete fluids. Some of them uh, can cause you to itch, some are even poisonous, and that's the way they protect themselves. So that's a defense for them. So again, no problem touching the frogs, touching the toads, you will not get any warts. Okay. An animal that has a number of myths about it is an elephant. And I think it's because it's so big and maybe people don't understand it. Elephants, we find them in Africa and in Asia, and you might see them in the zoos and in the old days in a circus. And some of the myths that we see also started by cartoons and things on television is that an elephant is afraid of a mouse. And when you look at this huge animal and you think, how could it be afraid of such a little mouse? Nothing is a predator to the elephant. The only thing it worries about is maybe humans. And when they're small, the little ca elephant calves, maybe a lion or something attacking them. But the reason it started a myth is people said, oh, that mouse is going to go up the elephant's trunk and, and it'll scare the elephant. Elephants don't have very good eyesight. And so they might hear the pitter patter of the mice around them. They're not sure what that is. So that's gonna, kind of started them as a myth being scared. Okay. Another elephant myth is with their trunk. I don't know if you knew this, but the trunk is actually the nose and the upper lip of the elephant. And they use that to pick things up and to breathe. They can go underwater, use it like a snorkel. People think it's like a giant straw because you've seen them suck up water. But if you've noticed, they don't suck the water all the way into their mouth. They use it and then will squirt it into their mouth or use it for a shower. So they have muscles, but then there's also a place that it's closed off to prevent the water from going up its nose. Another myth is that elephants eat peanuts, okay? You may have even seen people throwing peanuts at an elephant, but it's not part of their regular diet. Uh, in Africa, in Asia, they don't eat peanuts. This myth started when the elephants were first brought into the country in, as part of circuses and zoos. They would sell popcorn and peanuts to the people and, and, and folks would take the peanuts and throw them to the elephant. Well, you think again, look how small a peanut is. Look at that huge elephant. This isn't gonna fill them up at all. Plus now, scientists have said there's too much protein in the peanut for an elephant. They need to have a balanced diet. So they might eat a peanut now and then, but it's not their main diet. So I hope that answers your questions about elephant myths, such as mice, their trunks, and peanuts. Okay? Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, can I help you? I'm putting out elephant repellent. Elephant repellent? This is the city of Glendale. I, I just told everybody, we don't have elephants here. They're from Africa and from Asia. See, it works. So another myth, this is a plant myth, is that there are plants that can keep mosquitoes away from you. And uh, that's something that I've even tried myself. Um, I think a lot of you might know about a citronella candle. Citronella is a grass and they use it to make a candle. People light it when they're outside, maybe having a picnic or a barbecue. And that does actually work. A lot of plants with strong scents keep the mosquitoes away. Basil, lavender, marigolds. 
And these are a couple of the native plants here from Duke Majin. We've got white sage and we have our California sagebrush. And uh, the Native Americans would actually use this as an insect repellent. They would rub it around on their bodies and then when they were out hunting and things, the mosquitoes wouldn't bother them and they could stay quiet while they were after their uh, prey. Um, I've tried this when I've been out hiking. I've taken the sagebrush and the sage and I've tucked it into my hat and I've wiped it around my face. But for me, it doesn't seem to work. I guess I'm just so lovable, those mosquitoes can't get enough of me. But that's something uh, you might want to try. Maybe just grab a leaf again. We don't want you breaking off lots of plants, but just a leaf and, and rub it and, and see if it works for you, okay? So well, that myth is true. There are plants that can keep mosquitoes away. You can plant some of these in your gardens, but you actually need to be up close and have that scent on you, all right? The next myth I want to talk about is porcupines. Can a porcupine shoot its quills out? And, and this is something actually that was new to me. I've seen my whole life cartoons with porcupines shooting their quills out, and actually that is not true. A porcupine does not shoot its quills. The quills are, are hair, and they have them from their nose all the way to their tail. The short ones are on their face long ones at the back and the way that they get their quills out is they have to actually touch or bump into something and those quills are released so when you have a dog maybe that's bothering a porcupine that porcupine will turn around it'll try and warn that dog leave me alone but if the dog stays and keeps barking and bothering he might hit it with his tail and 500 or so of these quills or these hairs will come out and get into the dog's face and the porcupine quill is actually has a point and then sort of little arrowheads all the way down. So once it's in the skin, it's not coming out. You have to go to the vet to get it pulled out or if you should have a quill, you need to go to a doctor to have it removed. Um, if you keep moving around, that quill can go deeper and deeper into your muscle and into your tissue. So it's important you get it removed as soon as you can. The next myth that we have is all about bats. And I think people are fascinated by bats. We have a bat program on our uh, Glendale Parks website, especially at Halloween time, people are fascinated by bats. One of the myths are all bats carry rabies and that's not true. Just a small percentage of bats actually carry rabies. Uh, one myth, and these are also called urban legends, people believe these things are that bats go into people's hair. And the reason is bats need to swoop down when, when they're going out or they'll swoop down when they're going back into their, their home for the, the evening or the morning. Uh, remember, bats are nocturnal. They're going to come out when the sun sets and you'll see them coming out. They're hunting for mosquitoes and other insects. Um, so they're not going into your hair unless maybe you've got some insects that are buzzing around you like the gnats and things that we talked about in our swarm, swarm, swarm campfire program. Another myth is that all bats are blind and you'll hear people say, oh boy, he's as blind as a bat. And that's not true. Bats can see, they just use their hearing, their echolocation a lot more than they use their sense of sight, okay? A last myth I want to talk about is that bats will suck your blood. Everybody talks about vampire bats. And there is something called a vampire bat. It's a very small bat and it just takes a little blood and it usually attacks cows. It might bite a human once in a while, but most of the time they're after the cows. The cows don't even know they've been bitten because that bat is so small and takes so little blood. So. I hope that answers some of your questions and your myths about bats. Okay. Another myth that I've heard about my whole life and I didn't know if it was true or not was cow tipping. Can you actually push a cow over? And I've seen this in movies. They, they make fun of it on TV. And the answer is no, you cannot tip a cow over. A cow weighs thousands of pounds if you could tip it over, you would need four or five people pushing as hard as they could, exerting that force to tip the cow over. Cows 
don't sleep standing up. They actually lay on the ground. So you're not gonna be able to sneak up on a cow. Maybe you think, oh, we'll go out at night and tip a cow. The cow's gonna be awake. He'll know you're there. He might try and fight you off. He doesn't wanna be pushed around. So the answer is, can cows get tipped over? No, they cannot. Maybe if he's sick or something, but a healthy cow, you're not gonna have cow tipping happen, okay? And then the last myth I wanted to share with you is about the opossum. And the myth is that opossums hang by their tail from trees and branches. And that myth is not true. They might use their tail to help them while they're climbing, but most adult possums are too heavy to hang on a tree branch and support themselves. The babies though are smaller. They use their tails every once in a while to hang on, but they want to actually be hanging on their mom when they're out in the wilderness. So do opossums hang by their tails? Not really. And if you look at this tail, uh, people say it almost looks like a lizard tail. There's no fur on there. It looks kind of scaly. And uh, that actually reminds me of an old Native American legend. And one that I found was a Cherokee legend all about the opossum and why the opossum does not have fur on its tail. And the story goes that long ago, the opossum had a beautiful furry tail and he would wave it around and tell all the other animals, look at me, look how beautiful I am. And the other animals got a little jealous and a little tired of hearing this. And so one day they were going to have a big meeting of all the animals and the rabbit was in charge of inviting everybody. This time though, the rabbit said, opossum, come to our meeting tonight. We need all the animals around. And the opossum said, I'll come, but only if I get the best seat where people can see my beautiful tail. And the rabbit said, okay, okay, I'll take care of you. You come, you know, I'll send somebody over to get you ready for the big dance. So the rabbit went home and he talked to the cricket. And the cricket was known as being the best barber, the way he could cut up leaves and things. So the rabbit talked to the cricket and said, you go see the opossum and here's what I want you to do. Well, the cricket went to see the opossum and he said, I'm here to fix your tail so you could come to the dance tonight and show off. And the opossum said, oh, that's great. I'm gonna take a little nap. You clean up my tail. Well, he didn't know that, but the cricket was actually cutting all the fur off and then he wrapped his tail with a beautiful red ribbon. And when the opossum woke up, he said, what have you done to my tail? And the cricket said, well, I fixed your tail up so nicely, I wrapped it in a ribbon so it'll stay nice and ready for the dance. So the opossum finally arrived at the dance and took the best seat that was given to him by rabbit. And he thought, oh, now it's time for me to dance and show everybody my beautiful tail. So he took off the red ribbon, got into the middle of the dance floor and started waving his tail and dancing around. And all the other animals started laughing and pointing and the opossum thought, oh, they love me, they love my tail, I'll keep dancing for them. But more laughter came and more pointing came and the opossum started to think something might be wrong. So he looked back and he noticed that his tail was bare, all the fur was gone. And he was so embarrassed and so frightened that he just fell over and fainted and left a little grin on his face. And today, if ever you see a po an opossum and he's scared and they fall over, that's what they look like. And they still are missing the fur on their tail today. Okay, so I hope that answers some of your myths and your questions and your legends. There's a lot of information out there. Why not talk with your family and ask them what myths and beliefs they have and go online and try and find some answers to that. Again, I've seen the top 10, the top 15 myths. If you're interested, go ahead, spend some time researching it. Well, now we uh, close with our campfire. We um, usually do our classic s'mores, which is our graham cracker and our marshmallow and a chocolate bar. But you know, there's all different ways to make s'mores. Some people don't like chocolate bars, so they use other types of candy. 
Okay, so I've got my marshmallow roasted up. Some people like them golden brown. Some people like me like them flaming. Um, like I said, you can use the chocolate bars. A lot of people like that. But today I've got a York peppermint pad. He's gonna spice it up a little. So I've got my graham cracker, got my York patty, put my marshmallows on, put the other graham cracker on, and I'm good to go. So I hope you enjoy your s'mores, whether you make them at home or you have an opportunity to get out and use a campfire. Until we see you next time, we want you to take care of yourselves and take a hike. Goodbye for now.